I've been making videos long enough that it feels like I keep wearing the same t-shirts over and over again, which I do because I never buy myself new clothes. So I've started secretly borrowing uh, t-shirts from my boyfriend's wardrobe. And I know everyone says like, oh, the best thing about being in a gay relationship is that you double your wardrobe, which is true. Uh, but you know, you can also do that in straight relationships. You just need to be a bit more brave about uh, wearing each other's clothes, right? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader and I'm really excited to share all these books I've got recently and I'm, in, I'm always overexcited to talk about new books that are coming out and I think sound really exciting but these are especially exciting because I think they have, a lot of these have really beautiful covers so they'll be really nice to, to show off on camera. But, uh, but also like in April it feels like millions of really interesting um, good new things are, are coming out and being published which is great but it's also right in the middle of prize season so it's difficult finding time to read all these things but these are ones I'm really interested in and uh, and but first I want to talk about two really special books um, which were sent to me all the way from America because a lot of things are published in America without um, coming out in the UK for a long time or maybe they'll never be published in the UK and uh, I see on different booktubers channels really interesting books that are that are coming out but I don't really have access to them without um, you know spending a lot having them shipped over from America uh, but these two books I saw talked about on booktube and I was really interested in reading because of different booktubers reviews um, Jacqueline um, made a whole review video talking about this um, book which sounds really interesting and uh, Didi also made a, a video giving a review of this book uh, which sounds great as well and I have them now because the wonderful Matthew Sharapra sent them to me all the way from America and Matthew is wonderful and uh, so I'll link down the, the reviews um, for the, the different booktubers that made reviews of these books as well as Matthew's channel of course because uh, Matthew's channel is always wonderful to watch and his videos are always wonderful to watch. They just bring a smile to my face and he doesn't know this yet but in several years time we are going to co-produce a production, an off-off off-Broadway production of A Streetcar Named Desire uh, where we will will also act in it, of course, uh, and alternate playing the role of Blanche Dubois. Like, we, we can play her on different nights. You know, we'll work it out. It'll be fabulous. Anyway, these books. Um, so, so this is a book of short stories by Brian Washington. I think it's his debut book called Lot, and they are stories all centered around the city of Houston, focusing on a, a young man sort of coming of age story, but also the, the lives of other people around him in the city. And it's, it's so cool because um, on the inside of the book, there is a map of what I assume is Houston. So you can sort of see geographically of like of where all these people will meet up. I mean, it's just a very abstract design of a map, but you know, I just love when books like give you that sense of a place. And then also uh, the novel We Cast a Shadow, um, which has, you know, amazing cover, uh, which really um, shiny and just like beautiful design and, uh, and really seems to get at the, the center of the story, which is um, about a father, I think, who has a, uh, who has a boy that is biracial and who uh, starts to, as he, he grows, he, he becomes more black and, and the, the parent um, to try to protect the, the boy um, tries to make him more white. It's, um, it's set in this, this future set time. So it's obviously dealing with a lot of issues of race and is like Ralph Ellison's novel, uh, Invisible Man. Uh, so yeah, um, both sound really fascinating and uh, you know, um, Dee Dee and Jacqueline really sold them to me. So, uh, so yeah, I'll put their reviews down below. And then also, um, before I talk about new books, um, other books that I, I've got recently, there's uh, this uh, Everyman's edition of a classic novel called Lucky Purr by Henrik Pontipedian. Uh, Pontipedian. <laughs> and, uh, and this is set in Denmark and involves a young man who was born to a clergyman um, and, and is forced to live this very austere and unhappy life, um, who he escapes 
to move to a capital city where he very sensibly uh, marries an heiress and it, it follows his story from there. It's quite a, quite a long novel. Um, but this is an author who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1917. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I've never read him before. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful new edition. That every men's editions are always like really cool and beautiful to have it on your shelf. Um, you know, makes you look very smart. But uh, but yeah, it's a, uh, it sounds like a really great story that um, I, I want to read as well. And then another recent novel, um, which was published a few months ago, uh, called Night Theater by Vikram Parlikar. And uh, this has a beautiful cover, I think, like really striking. And, you know, I'm just a sucker for these, you know, like elaborate, bright designed covers. And I know it's sort of in vogue now. I know if, if, if Adam from Memento Mori um, saw this, he would, he would probably rip it apart with his teeth. But he can't really do that because he has gone off from booktube for a while or taken extended leave. And, you know, and like all the greatest like divas, he now just appears in, in cameos and other people's videos now and then. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, this, this novel sounds really interesting. So it's set in a hospital in India where a doctor has the night shift and he's staying up all night in this hospital. And during the night, people, a uh, whole range of people, come into the hospital having these wounds, um, which he knows that they, they couldn't have logically like survived uh, sustaining these wounds because they, they, they're so severe. Um, but, um, but yet yeah, there they still are um, looking to be treated. And so, yeah, it's about his experiences of that. So it sounds quite surreal and um, fascinating and, and dark. And I'm just really curious about it. And then I have a big group of really interesting signing books, which are being published in April for the very first time um, and which publishers have kindly sent me. Uh, but I only talk about books that I'm really interested in reading because why would I talk about them if I wasn't really interested in reading them? Uh, so first off, there is this book of short stories called Ethereal Worlds, which has a really beautiful cover and is by Tatiana Tolstaya. Uh, and this is an author who, um, she's meant to be a very revered and respected author in her native Russia, um, though I've never heard of her before. Um, and this is her first book, which has been published into English for the first time in 20 years. And, uh, and yeah, so I think that it's, it's a whole range of different short stories in all different kinds of styles. Some of them are very realistic. Some of them are a bit more like surreal and abstract. And, um, and yeah, covering a whole range of different characters' lives. And, you know, it's always really difficult to summarize a book of short stories. Um, but yeah, I think this sounds really interesting. And then um, there are, uh, there's uh, this novel, which um, a lot of people have been talking about and has been much hyped um, by Andrea Lawler, which has a very striking cover again, um, and is called Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl. And I think it's about a uh, young, man who um, frequents different gay clubs um, in uh, the early 90s and travels around to different, lots of different clubs and queer venues um, and, but, and finds like uh, his, his actual shape changes, he, um, his body changes um, in these different situations and becomes different people and allows him to have all sorts of different interactions. Um, which, yeah, sounds like a really interesting premise for a story. So yeah, very eager to read this pretty pink book. And uh, then I have um, a couple books um, which are uh, sort of relating that they're both kind of nature writing. And when I first heard about these books, I just found, felt like I want to have a whole month I want to devote to writing about nature writing because like I think at heart I'm a real nature boy even though you know I like staying inside most of the time where it's very like clean and quiet but <laughs> but uh, but I, I I love like taking walks in nature every now and then you know as we all should do um and and uh, and so yeah I I there's this book um by Benjamin Myers called Under the Rock and Benjamin Myers is I think this sort of a superstar writer, um, but who isn't all that well known and really should be because he's an incredible writer. I've only read one of his novels um, called Beastings, um, which came out several years ago and was so brilliant and wonderful. And this um, has really striking cover. And I think it's sort of essays, nonfiction, memoir type writing. It's about him writing about his locale, um, somewhere very close to him, that he spends a lot of time in this natural environment and him really examining that natural environment and his relationship with it, um, called 
under the rock. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, um, I, I, it's quite a, a long book, but, um, but, and, and it's a bit difficult to know what it'll actually be like, but, um, but one that I just think sounds really interesting and, and I just trust him as a writer, you know, so I just want to experience this. And then there is a, um, novel called Ash Before Oak by Jeremy Cooper. And this one, um, the, the publisher, Fitzcarraldo Editions, they have a, um, a novel prize which they, they hold every year and this won that novel prize last year and it's a it's written in the form of a memoir of nature writing of someone observing nature but it is a novel and um, and so I'm interested to see how those sort of diary memoir entries like build into the story of a novel because I think that's a really interesting perspective to take uh, and then um, there is another book of short stories called it's it's Gone Dark Over Bill's Mothers uh, by Lisa Blower. And, and this is a book of short stories um, which deal a lot with, um, they, they sort of deal with a whole range of different characters, but a lot of them focus, I think, on the lives of working class mothers, which is a perspective which is not often represented in fiction. And, um, and so, uh, so, yeah, I think this will be really interesting to read. And it's blurbed at the top by um, Kit DeWall, who's always a big supporter of, um, of writing and fiction uh, and the voices of um, working class. Uh, people. So, and then there is a novel called Nina X by Ewan Morrison, and this is about a child who's raised in a and as a sort of experiment in this very secluded environment uh, by a, a couple of scientists um, who. So I think it sort of has a behavioral scientist type um, thing because it's it's a child being raised in an experiment um, and has been cut off from the outside world. Um, in an attempt to uh, ra be raised entirely separated from the false gods of capitalism and the cult of the self. And, uh, and, but then uh, this child um, goes out into the world and is about experiencing freedom for the very first time. Then there is a novel uh, called The Firestarters by Jan Carson. And I, it's very difficult to know what this novel is actually about. Um, it's by a writer who lives in Belfast, an Irish writer. and uh, and. And I, I think it's about um, two parents who have children that they're very fearful of, and these children have the ability to sort of change the environment in a very damaging way. And it's about their dilemma of, of knowing what to do with those, those children that they're very fearful of. I think that's what it's about. It's, it has a very like cryptic description on, on the inside, so it's, um, it's yeah, hard to know until I actually read it. But, um, but yeah, this is a book that I'm very eager to read. Then uh, there is a novel um, which has a really striking, beautiful, like very simple cover, but I think it's very beautiful, and um, called Things That Fall From The Sky by Selcha Ahaba. And, uh, and this novel um, takes place, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's um, from Finland. And it's, um, it's about the stories of three different people whose lives radically changed because of a coincidence um, uh, that uh, just a sort of coincidental thing that happens to them. So it's about how their lives radically change because of these, these seemingly chance encounters. Um, it sort of, you know, sounds like the fiction of Paul Auster, but, um, but, uh, but written from the point of view of probably somebody that I'll enjoy a lot more. Then there is a novel that I think sounds so interesting. I've been hearing so many good things about this. It's called To Leave with the Reindeer by Olivia Rosenthal. Um, it's a novel that's just been translated, um, was first published in France. And it's, I think it's about a, a sort of memoir of a, of a woman's coming of age, but also her accounts of different animals and the personalities and lives of animals, and looks at how our human, individual human personalities intersect with those of the personalities of animals. Um, so it sounds, yeah, really curious and, and interesting. Uh, so yeah, very eager to read this. It's being published by And Other Stories. Then there are two books um, which are being published uh, by, I mean, it's not, it's not a, a new press, um, being published by Boiler House Press, uh, but, um, but this is the first time that they've ever published fiction. So these are their first fictional um, outputs. And, and I'm really curious about this publisher, Boiler House Press, because they are based at the University of East Anglia in Norwich, which is 
is the university that I studied at and got my master's degree from. So, uh, so, so yeah, I'm very excited about these. The first is Animalia Paradoxa by Henrietta Rose Innes, and she's a South African writer. And these are short stories, um, which uh, uh, you know, difficult to summarize because it's a book of short stories. But yeah, about a whole different range of characters in South Africa. So, um, so you know, paging Sean the Book Maniac, um, you might be really interested in this. Uh, then there is a novel called The Large Door by Jonathan Gibbs. And this is about a female academic that goes to deliver a lecture in Europe. And, um, and I think she encounters a number of different individuals that she hasn't seen in many years, um, but who had a significant impact on her life and so it causes her to reflect on her her past and how much she's changed and where she's come to in her life. I think that's what it's about uh, but uh, but yeah this is an author that I've always been eager to read and um, and so this is a new novel of his that uh, that I would like to read. <laughs> a memoir called Inheritance by Danny Shapiro and this uh, has a really interesting premise so it's about a um, the, the author's uh, life where she uh, took a DNA test um, sort of on a whim, um, you know, it's become very popular for people to do DNA tests and look into their, their family's past. And she unexpectedly finds from this that her father, the man who she thought was her father and was always raised to believe was her father, is not actually her father. And so it's about her quest to track down what happened to her actual father and why this happened. And she can't query her parents because I think both of her parents had died by this point. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's that voyage of discovery, um, which uh, yeah sounds really interesting and has blurbs from a uh, lot of great people like Cheryl Strayed and Jennifer Egan. And uh, so, so yeah, this sounds like a really great memoir. Uh, then there is a novel which is a, a reprint, but is really beautiful um, reprint that Canongate has done. I think it's as done as sort of a celebration of, of their 100th publication, or or um, and uh, and yeah, it's by it's the Gardens of Evening Mist by Tan Tuan En, and uh, and this was shortlisted for the Booker Prize, and I think it actually won the Walter Scott Prize, which is a, a book award for historical fiction. Then there's a novel uh, called Prince of Monkeys by Namdi M. Hiram. And uh, this, uh, this, this is actually being published in America. I'm not often sent books from America, but, um, but the publisher sent me this. And it has a really striking, interesting cover. And the, the story sounds very good too. Um, so it's set in Lagos in Nigeria. And it's about a group of boys that grew up together in the 1980s and 90s. And, uh, and they're very close knit, but then as they grow into adults, obviously they, they grow slightly apart from each other and take very different ideological stances, um, especially when the, the government changes and shifts. And so it's, it's about their, how their relationships sort of change over time. And uh, yeah, sounds really good. We the Survivors by Tash Ah. And uh, Tash Ah is, is a writer that I've always meant to read. I've heard really good things about his books, but, um, but never actually read them before. Um, and, and this novel is set in Malaysia in a fishing village and is about the life of a man um, who is just sort of an ordinary man struggling to make a living, but then uh, takes a very violent action at one point. And it's, it sort of looks at his backstory of how he came to take this extreme violent action in a pressurized environment. Um, so yeah, sounds really good. And then um, I have a couple novels set in Berlin um, that I want to talk about. And the first one has really great cover and, uh, and is an older novel called The Artificial Silk Girl by Ermgard Kuhn. And um, this is uh, a writer, a German writer who died, I think she died in the 1980s. And so um, Penguin Classics are reprinting this um, with this great new cover. And, uh, and it's about the life of a, of a woman who wears, um, who I think she finds this like think, um, mink, mink stole or like a fur coat and then moves to the big city wanting to engage in the big city and, uh, and, uh, but finds 
there a lot of um, difficulty and hardship um, trying to integrate into that sort of lifestyle. And uh, yeah, it just sounds like a really great premise and story. It sort of sounds like a Jean Reese novel, um, but uh, but yeah, I'm really curious to read this. And uh, and I've wondered if any of you have read this before too. You know, sort of Colleen, Britta Bowler, and uh, and uh, and Mel. Um, I don't know if either of you have read this. If you've watched this, um, let me know if you've read this. And then there is a um, a novel called Built on Sand by Paul Scratton. And um, and this novel is set in um, Berlin uh, and. It talks about, it's sort of about how um, the, the society in Berlin, um, so this takes place at, at more recently um, in the, the 21st century, and, and it's about how um, the, the foundations of Berlin are sort of built on sand, and if you dig down long enough, you'll find sand, and, um, and so it's sort of shaky foundations to be built on, which is you know, sort of a metaphor for um, how the, there's been so many societal shifts in Germany and Berlin over over the past century, and is looking at the the chain, radical changes in that society through the story of um, different workers in the city, um, construction workers and teachers, and um, yeah, that sort of thing. So yeah, sounds like a good story. If I had two lives by Abigail N. Rosewood, and uh, this this has a great cover as well, um, and is the story of a a girl who is born in Vietnam. Um, and until she's uh, seven years old when she moves to the United States and then as an adult um, she is uh, sort of struggling with her sense of identity and has to return to Vietnam um, and, and, and is looking for a sense of belonging. And uh, so yeah, sounds like a powerful story and yeah, I just love the cover and trying to imitate the cover, you know, like mm. a book of nonfiction uh, called Losing Earth by Nathaniel Rich and this is looking at a decade in the, the 1970s and going a bit, I think, into the 1980s uh, when a lot of different scientists uh, discovered a lot of facts about global warming and that global warming was actually happening. Uh, but then, and were, you know, so urgently said that measures need to be taken to stop this, but how because of a lot of politics and, um, and, and, and uh, corporations which, uh, which tried to, to stop those changes from happening, um, those changes didn't occur and it's how we've gotten in this very messy situation where climate change is occurring. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's examining that, that past and history of science. From the Wreck by Jane Rawson. This is uh, a novel which comes from Australia and uh, comes with a blurb on the front from no other than Simon Savage. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, he is a big fan of this book and, um, and it has a really curious premise. So it's about a man who uh, survives a shipwreck, uh, but after that shipwreck, he sort of takes on the identities of people that were lost in that shipwreck, or, or he has within his mind the, the different identities of, of these different people that were lost in that shipwreck. So yeah, it's a really interesting premise. My Enemy's Cherry Tree by Wayne Tang Kuo. Uh, this uh, novel about a man who uh, is born into poverty and he struggles to make a life for himself, and, uh, and he marries a, a woman who vanishes um, quite suddenly and uh, and so it's it's about his life after that and trying to find out what happened to her and trying to make a life for himself after she vanishes. Next is a novel by Judith Hennigan and uh, I know sometimes we, we have trouble pronouncing authors names but in this case I can't pronounce the the title of this novel I'm just gonna show it. Uh, I think it's Sinegurkochka I think, I don't know, I can't pronounce it, uh, but it's about a, um, the, the story is about a woman named Rachel who lives in Kiev in the year 1992 and she has a child um, that she's trying to raise there. She's an English woman, so she's living abroad and she finds that the, the political situation is very volatile and, um, and there's a lot of dangers around and so it's about her trying to protect that child and raise that child in this very difficult environment. Um, and it has a blurb on the front from Claire Fuller who's a wonderful author and a friend of mine so I really trust her opinion. And then finally, the last book I'm going to talk about is a very exciting book, um, which is Jen Campbell's debut book of poetry. She's had a lot of poetry published before, but this is the first proper book of poetry, I think, um, called The Girl Aquarium. And, uh, and as you would expect, it blends a lot of stories of, of fairy tale and, and issues to do with the body into these uh, poems. Um, and so, uh, yeah, very excited to read this and look at how 
gorgeous this cover is. Um, so beautiful. And yeah, very exciting. Booktube Zone, Jen Campbell's uh, new book of poetry. So those are all the books I'm going to talk about. Let me know um, any that you're interested in reading um, that, that you think sound, sound really intriguing. And, uh, and yeah, let me know what, what books um, you've gotten recently, which you're really excited about. So I'll speak to you again soon and happy reading, everyone. Bye-bye.